I'm Leah Terichansky with the Real News in Tel Aviv, Israel. This week, Iran once again dominated the headlines in the Israeli press. On Friday, the Israeli daily Haaretz revealed the Minister of Defense, Ehud Barak, may be changing his mind and pulling back his support for an Israeli attack on Iran. Barak was the main supporter of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's push for a strike on Iran's nuclear facilities, and many speculate that if he's indeed rescinding his support, an attack may not take place at all. One of Netanyahu's main allies is Finance Minister Yuval Steinitz. He attacked the Defense Minister and confirmed the rumors. Shesar Abitachon Ehud Barak, kmo she meduvach hit karer banosay azir. Ra, kodim kol, ani lo yedia likroet Shesar Abitachon Barak. Barak's potential change of heart came at the end of a week of what the Israeli press called the leadership's climbing down from the tree. The Daily Idiot Achonot writes that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu may be changing his tone, following what they called increased tensions with the American leadership. The article writes, After weeks of media wrestling between Jerusalem and Washington, which peaked with the harsh criticism of the American chief of joint staff, it appears that at least at the moment, both the White House and the Prime Minister's office are trying to calm the environment and reduce tensions between the two countries. The criticism the article referred to came from General Martin Dempsey during his visit in Israel last weekend. The Americans are afraid of the understanding of the Israeli government that the time is very short and it needs to do something. The Americans are asking to create a long time more so that they can allow the political sanctions that they are trying to establish to do their work. The Americans are asking to create a long time more so that they can allow the political sanctions Damsey wasn't the only public figure to speak out this weekend. Former Supreme Court Judge Eliyahu Vinograd added himself to the already long list of current and former Israeli security and political leaders opposed to the Israeli attack on Iran. Vinograd headed the committee in charge of investigating the failures of the Israeli 2006 war on Lebanon. This week he spoke to the Israeli army radio Galgalatz and said, <laughs> Perhaps in an effort to counter the opposition, one top politician came out in support of Netanyahu. Tzachi Anegbi has served as the environment minister, public security minister, and justice minister, and according to the article, former Prime Minister Ariel Sharon thought he should be the head of state. Hanegbi was recorded speaking at an event for activists of the Likud party to which he recently returned, the party of the Prime Minister. Following the publication of the recording, Hanekbi gave a lengthy interview to Haaretz journalist Ali Shavit, which was published Friday. In the interview, Hanekbi speaks out in defense of the Prime Minister, explaining what he believes would happen if Iran goes nuclear, and dismissing the analysis that an Israeli attack on Iran will be answered with a multi-front war. I have an in-depth knowledge of the Iranians' capabilities, and I do not think they have any special surprise up their sleeve. If Syria initiates an attack on Israeli population centers, we will have to push Syria 50 years back. And in the matter of Hezbollah, I don't think Nasrallah will retaliate strongly. If the civilian population of Israel will be hit, Lebanon will be set back to the Stone Age. Joining Hanegbi was Likud parliamentarian Sipi Chotoveli, who issued a letter alongside eight members of Knesset supporting Netanyahu. The letter was published Sunday. וכך אומרת העצומה של חברת הכנסת ציפי חוטובלי, אנו חברי הכנסת מסיעת הליכוד מביעים אמון מלא בדרך שבה תתקבל ההכרעה שלך, ראש הממשלה נתניהו, בסוגיה האיראנית, ובטוחים שכל החלטה שתתקבל היא מתוך ראייה אחראית של אינטרסים הקיומיים של ישראל. In an interview for the Israeli Daily Ma'ariv, Chotoveli said she assumes that by the end of the following day, most of the members of the party in parliament would sign on. However, none did. 
One Likud parliamentarian, Carmel Shamaha Cohen, was accidentally added to the list of signatories to the letter. He made clear in the press that he did not sign on, adding that I think 99% of the people who speak on the issue are lacking 99% of the information available to the decision makers. Last week, Netanyahu attempted to court the support of major religious leader Rabbi Ovadia Yosef, who is the spiritual leader of the religious party Shas. The party has 11 seats in parliament and four ministers, none of whom currently support an Israeli attack. Finally, Israeli papers flooded this week with rumors the United States government passed a secret message to Iran. The Israeli Daily Globes writes, Officials in the Obama administration recently sent a message through two European nations to the leadership in Tehran, saying the United States has no intention to stand by Israel if Israel decides to attack Iran's nuclear facilities one-sidedly and without coordination. It continues, according to the report, the message was sent to the leaders of the Islamic Republic in order to prevent an Iranian attack on America's many targets in the Persian Gulf, including aircraft carriers and many military bases which may fall under real danger if and when the Israeli attack will take place. For The Real News, I'm Leah Terachansky in Tel Aviv.